Hello guys and welcome to another Wargame Red Dragon, Dragon tutorial video with me Bubblebox and today we're looking at logistics management. So this is the first of two videos on logistics. This one looking at the management and the second one looking at some of the individual logistics units and what they can be used for and what they're useful for and what they're not so useful for. So for the first one there are two types of logistics categories in the game command units and supply units. Now command units are basically designed to control the terrain and supply units are designed to maintain the fighting capabilities of your units. All the command units are indicated by a star and they are the only ones that are capable of taking control of an area or a sector. The command units come in different types and they can be jeeps or armoured cars or armoured trucks, they can be infantry, helicopters or even tanks. Now command units do have to be stationary to take control of the sector and a helicopter containing command infantry must land and disembark the command infantry in order for those command infantry to capture the zone. Now all command units should never be placed next to artillery, this is very dangerous, or close to AA units, this can also be dangerous. Now these AA units can be placed in the vicinity of the command units, but just don't place them right next to them. The reason is that when artillery fire and when AA units fire, they do reveal their position for the period of time while they're firing, and so they can be targeted by the enemy or the enemy's counter battery fire and uh, and can there they, the enemy could therefore destroy your command while it's actually targeting other types of your units now in fact command units should avoid any type of enemy encounter and the reason is that the majority have very weak weapons and are very poorly armoured if they have any armour at all and will gen generally die if they so much as glimpse or sniff an enemy. The only possible exception to this is the command tanks but even these should not really be exposed directly to the enemy if it can be. So what about supply units? Well supply units enable you to repair and supply with, supply with ammo and fuel all friendly units uh, of yours and of your allies. When supplies are transferred they're represented by a flashing yellow icon. Now supply units can be trucks, helicopters and ships as well as your forward operating base or your FOB. A supply helicopter must of course land in order to resupply the units around it. Resupply will occur automatically when a friendly unit finds itself in the range of the supplying unit. And this will be shown by the yellow circle whilst the resupply is being carried out, basically. Now resupply does, of course, cost resources, and these resources are represented by a yellow gauge next to the, unit, the supply unit's name. You can manually deactivate one, two or all of the different types of supplies in order to better manage your resources. So for example you could turn off the resource which is refueling or you could turn off the resource that is repairing and just keep filling your unit just with ammo in that way you can sort of manage the resources and where the resources are going. Now the FOB, the forward operating base, is the only building that you can actually place in the game and it must be placed at the start of the game. It does have the largest storage capacity of all of the supply units and is the most resilient of all the units as well and has very high health. The only downside is of course that once you place your FOB you can't move it, it's there for good. If a supply unit is destroyed, all of the ammunition that a unit is tra transporting will explode and can actually damage surrounding units and cause other supply units close by to explode also. So it's a good idea not to clump your supply units together or to keep them in twos, threes and fours. Just keep them separated a little bit and maybe not right next to your vulnerable units because if they are hit they may well damage or destroy all the units around them. 
Now, as well as supplying your combat units, supply units can resupply each other as well and can also get supplies from the forward operating base. And it all goes in the following order. The forward operating base can supply ships and the forward operating base and the ships can supply supply helicopters and the forward operating base and the ships and the supply helicopters can supply supply trucks. So it goes in the order FOB, supply ship, supply helicopter, supply truck. Also, in each category, um, a unit with a greater capacity can supply a lesser capacity unit. For example, a large truck can resupply a small truck and a large helicopter can resupply a small helicopter. You can, you can, if you click on your unit and then you right click on a supply unit, it gives a resupply command and the selected unit more moves close enough to be resupplied. You can also command a unit to go and supply units that need resources in the same kind of way by clicking on the supply unit and then clicking on the unit that needs resupply. However, I find this a little bit glitchy for some for some units. For example, if you've got a bunch of um, pumas out on the sea that have just fired off all their anti-ship missiles and you want to resupply from a supply chopper that's sitting on the land, then it's difficult because the supply chopper will also try and move toward the pumas and they all end up in the middle of the sea, nothing supplying anything. So it does work for fobs, it tends to work for trucks, but can be more problematic when trying to do this for helicopter supplies. One final note is that a stressed out unit cannot actually be resupplied for 40 seconds. And this really is a game mechanic so that stressed units can't just sit, say, in a building with a supply unit behind them engaging the enemy and keeping on reloading and repairing at the same time so if your unit's stressed it will not um, fix itself up and it will not fix itself up for 40 seconds um, after it stops being stressed as well so that's about it for this video um, I hope you got something out of it. The next video, I'm going to look at some of the individual logistics units. So please do comment, like and subscribe and have a look at the next video. I'll post it up in a day or two. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.